this one's about rocks and chemicals and how to build. We taught you how to build your subpartition wall, how to do your architraves, your skirtings, your stud work, maybe door frame, engine hanger door. Now you need to know how to put your handles off. That's what we're going to deal with in this video. So here's our lock and handset latch set, and as we said, the latch needs reverse. An important consideration when you're choosing your lock is to get the right distance from the centre of the spindle, from the centre of the keyhole to the edge of the door plate. Locks vary in the sizes of throw for different sizes and styles of doors or frames of doors if you like. So now we're going to put this centre into our door. So once we've chosen our position, just about halfway up the door for me, this is aesthetically nice, then we need to put it exactly in the middle, get some reverse like so. I'm going to mark around this, not with a pencil, because a needle line is more accurate than a pencil. So we've got it square, so I'll put it on a needle mark, and then scratch up there. The reason why carpenters like these either standing knife or marking knife cut is because you've got a tiny little scratch there and it helps locate your chisel. So once we've done our knife marks for our lock, our faint knife marks, we line up the top of the plate, top line, bottom, and then we can put a faint pencil mark here and a faint pencil mark here. And we know that there is a measurement block, but if you choose your centre line and you make two crosses, so here and here is the keyhole, and here, same centre line as spindle. And that's where we're going to drill the holes for the keyhole and the spindle. So our mortise is going to be chopped out between these lines. It's going to be here. We're not going to chop here to here because obviously this plate needs to sit in flush with the edge of the door. So First of all, drill some holes in here, choose some centres, get the right size straight bit, drill about one, two, three, probably four, maybe five or six holes down here. Don't choose one that's exactly the same as these because you've got little bulges here on the spindle for strength, the housing of the spindle. So you need to be a tiny bit wider, and that one is it's the five eighths. Um, Five eighths of it. Now what we do is we look at our lock. Sixty-five millimeters. We have to chisel out the mortise lock. Choose a suitable size chisel. And first of all, what we're going to do is those tiny scratch marks. We're going to drop our chisel into the scratch. When you're chiselling this way, normally you're chiselling with the grain and it tends to want to split the door. So your first row of chisel, chiselling here and use a wider chisel should be quite gentle. And listen to the noise of the hammer. Flat always goes where you want to cut off. So. so don't whack this in too hard. You split your door. When you've got that first sink, something should have to a shallow depth. Now, what we need to do is sink it to a depth for the lock plate. And this is where listening is very important. And so listen to the rhythm and the sound of the hammer. And you'll hear that the density of the knock is always the same, except for here where we have to. A bit jealous, huh? Now I'm going to have to come over here to this side, to this edge, because we didn't cut it. 
and then took your chisel slightly shallower. Flick out nice and easy. Sink this chisel in a bit deeper. I'm not even having to hammer with this because I'm going in with the grain rather than chiseling across the grain. It's suitable with mortise chisel. And, and we go to the top hole first and square it up. Bottom hole. So now, chop our holes deeper. So we've got our mortise for our mortise lock, and I can see that will pull up a beautifully flush. What we need is the holes for the lock and the holes for the spindle. Put the edge of our plate on the lines, as I said, but here we've got the thickness of the plate. I'm going to put a hole on the end, and sorry I've got to come in front of the camera one second. We're going to do the same on both sides. That one, check our horizontal central keyhole, central keyhole. Here's our handset, and I've selected two drill, drill bits, one for the size of the keyhole, and one for the slot at the bottom. Chisel out between. Like I said, gently, not all in one big thwack. Now we'll do the other side. Select the drill bit size to suit the spindle, otherwise it will get stuck on the edges. So what I sometimes do instead of drilling a pilot hole, very gentle tap. Again, this is in sound. And it's come nice and flush. Now, the spindle into its hole. Fix one side first with four screws, but always put the key in the lock before you fix the screws. So you put the key in the lock and turn it so you've got some gaze in the lock. And then you go to centre it around the shaft of the key so the key doesn't get stuck coming in and out. So spindle in, handle, and we'll just check the rotation. Again, key in the lock. And we go to the lock. And centre around the shaft of the key, otherwise the keys get stuck when you put them in and out. Okay, that was written both sides. Latch working, lock working smoothly. Right, leave it open. Take the pencil. Mark the lock. And the latch, hit the frame. Open the door. Now we're ready to fit our striker plate. According to the two holes that we've just marked in the right position. Now we need to fit the striker plate to the frame. What I'm going to do is I'm going to measure from the inside of the door, which is the door stop, to the edge of the latch. So I'm going to mark that there. So that now I know that. My plate goes in here. We're going to have to chamfer recess because of the angle of this. We're going to have a piece in there and a piece in there. So this is your latch and this is your mortise for your lock. As you can see, it's got to align to here to shut the door nicely to this edge. I'm going to sink that area in and then I'm going to deal with the mortises.
We're going to have a bevel because of this bevel, so I'm going to mark here where the throw of my bevel is going to be. From there to about there. And what we're going to do now is instead of chiseling square, I'm going to tilt the chisel to the angle of the bevel to imitate the bevel. Now instead of chopping in straight, it's a bevel, so I'll chisel across at a slight angle. And then I can just trim back the fine adjustments with the chisel. We're just going to take a little bit off like that with a sharp chisel to take those rounds. I've sunk the bevel of the striker plate a bit more. Now I'm marking around from the mortise cut out. Well, again, cut across your end grain first. Across your end grain. And then the edges. So then I've set the technique to chop the mortise deeper. Just like chopping the rebate. And slowly work our way to the depth that the latch needs to engage. And that's plenty for a latch step. So finishing court cutting out the mortises and just tapping the striker plate tightly into the neatly cut hole and two screws to fix. And that's the job done. Door all finished. Keep the kids from hiding in there or doing naughty things in the young room storage.